What is up, homies? My name is Felix, and I am here back again with another video for you all today. And this one, I think, is going to probably help out a lot of people. Because one thing that I get people saying really often is like, oh, I don't know how to make melodies. Like, I don't know what to do for my melodies. I don't have any ideas. Like, and so on and so forth. But don't worry, because it's totally a normal thing to be struggling with melodies when you're first starting out. I was there myself at one point, so I know how it feels to, you know, just be feeling like you can't make any good melodies. So yeah, hopefully in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to kind of spice up your your melodies how to make melodies that sound a little bit cooler and make your melodies really stand out from you know the the crowd one thing that I do need to clarify is that in this video I'm not gonna be teaching you guys music theory I'm not gonna be teaching you like chord theory or any of that stuff I actually do have a video on how to make chords and chord progressions I'll put that down in the description below because I know that video has helped out a lot of people and it'll probably help you to understand a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna be talking about today in this video so if you haven't watched that video go and watch that because that'll help out a lot but yeah anyway so there's not gonna be any music theory involved in this video but I am going to be just showing you like different things that you can do with LMMS and different things that you can do like creative wise with your melodies that are probably going to help you out a little bit in making your melodies you know a little bit spicier a little bit saucier you know what I mean so yeah hopefully I'm able to teach you all a thing or two by the end of this video and before we start make sure you guys check out my Instagram and my SoundCloud which will both be down in the description below along with the playlist of songs I produce my beat store my discord all that stuff will be down there go check it out if you wish to do so and yeah now let's get into this video so as you can see I have a little keyzone classic on here but this is gonna apply for literally anything you can use this for piano melodies for literally stock plugin melodies for literally any type of melodies also before I even start doing anything the one single most important tip that I can give all of you is to literally just be creative like you have to try new things you can't get stuck into you know a typical way a typical you know method of doing things you have to really think outside the box when you're making your melodies I try to experiment with new things new plugins new sounds stuff like that that's probably the most important tip that I can give you because if if you keep a closed mind on the way you make your melodies and the way you make your beats you're probably not going to improve very much and you're probably not going to get a whole lot better with your melody making or your beat making and stuff like that so yeah that's probably my most important my number one most important tip that i can give all of you but now i'm actually going to show you what you can do to spice up your melody and make it sound really cool so we have this little melody going on right here this is a super super simple melody but you know some of you might be at the point where you're making stuff like this and we're going to basically start with this little melody and we're going to make it into something that sounds really cool so yeah as is this sounds like this. And then that's just basically going to repeat over and over and over, but that's going to get super repetitive. So we don't want a repetitive melody. We want our melody to be like around eight bars ish. That's like a pretty good length for melodies because it's not too long to where it's going to be like, you know, all over the place, but it's not too short to where you're just going to keep hearing the same thing over and over and over. So yeah, we need to take this and we need to spice it up quite a bit. So the first thing that we're going to do with this that I know a lot of you guys already know, because I do this in a lot of my own videos is we're going to select all of these bottom notes and we're going to bring them down here as bass notes and basically what this is going to do is it's just going to kind of fill out the chords and make them sound a lot fuller and a lot more rich i guess you could say i'm going to hit control and shift at the same time and then i'm just going to drag over this i'm going to drag over this and drag over all of these and now i'm just going to hold down shift and we're going to drag this over and now drag it back and now we can hold down control and then press down on your keypad so now we have these bass notes and it's going to sound like this So the next tip that I have here is to adjust the velocities of some of your notes. So if you were to play a piano on your own, like a real piano, you're kind of going to play every single note at a different volume. So what I like to do, first of all, is take all your bass notes, so make sure you keep them selected, and then just click down a little bit, because the bass notes are kind of naturally going to be a little bit louder, and you want them to be tucked a little bit underneath the main chords. But then also what you can do is you can zoom in a little bit, and now we can hold down control and select this one. And now you'll be able to adjust the velocity of just this note here. Put it like maybe just below 100%. And then you can do the same with all these. Maybe this one will be a little bit lower than the bass note. Maybe this one will be right here. And you actually might not even be able to tell the difference. But it is going to make a little bit of a difference and make your chord just sound a little bit more human, if you know what I mean. You can do that with all of these. You can adjust the volumes a little bit, just like this. Just to keep things sounding, you know, not completely robotic. One other thing to keep in mind is that this chord progression right here is pretty basic as far as the type of these chords 
chords. So like I said, I'm not going to go into, you know, chord theory or you know, music theory or anything like that. But one really important thing that you should do, which probably most of you already do when you make your melodies because I've put it in my more recent tutorials, but scale highlighting is super, super important. So this scale right here is going to be the C major scale or the A minor scale. And the reason I know that is because these are all white notes. And if your melody uses all white notes, it's either going to be in C major or A minor. But don't get too caught up on that right now. What you really should do is you should start off by going to scale highlighting and then picking whether you want major or aeolian is minor or harmonic minor is kind of the more spooky sounding scale or you know whichever one you want to use you just click it so i'll just do aeolian then you go to whichever note you want to highlight and you go right click and then do mark current scale and now all the notes that are highlighted over here are going to be in the scale of d minor but however our melody is in the scale of a minor so once i mark this all of these notes will match up with the notes that are highlighted. So this right here is probably honestly the most helpful feature in LMS. This is probably going to help improve your melodies by like 10 times. If you choose the scale that you want before you make your chords, everything that you put down is going to be in key if you put it in these highlighted notes. So you're not going to have to struggle with figuring out is this note in key, is this chord in key, stuff like that. It's going to be all laid out for you nice and easy. And this is going to really help when we get into making, you know, melodies like counter melodies like this and not just chords because you'll be able to know exactly what notes you can use for your counter melody. So yeah, scale highlighting is literally such a helpful thing and I recommend that everyone, everyone, everyone uses it. So that's going to bring me to my next tip, which is making your chords a little bit more spicy, a little bit more interesting. So as I mentioned, right, these chords are pretty basic. They're not anything crazy. Like this is just a simple C major chord. This is a simple A minor chord. This is a simple G major chord. This is a simple F major chord. So without going into too much music theory and stuff, what you should do is you should really just play around with adding notes on top, maybe adding notes in here. And this is going to make your chord sound much much different than just a simple C major chord as you can hear right here and you might like the way that chord sounds you might not but either way it's good to just play around with it so let's say you don't like that let's say you want to adjust some of these notes so let's bring this one down and then maybe let's put a G in here so we're gonna play this chord and see how this sounds and I like the way that that chord sounds a lot. So let's just leave it like that. So yeah, basically we just took a simple C major chord and then we turned it into something a little bit more interesting by adding, you know, a couple different notes. And this chord does have a specific name, but you might not even know what the chord is called. And that doesn't really matter. As long as it sounds good, it doesn't really matter what the chord is called or anything like that. I think that's the reason that people say, you know, music theory is not really important because if it sounds good, then it sounds good. You don't really have to get too caught up on the names or, you know, the labels for things. Anyway, so we just made this new chord and it sounds pretty cool, but now we're going to have to make all of these chords into something cooler too. I mean, unless you don't want to, unless you like the way that a certain chord sounds, you can just keep it however you like how it sounds. But the purpose of this video is to, you know, spice everything up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, place a note here maybe. And then I think maybe I'll place a note that's higher up, like right here. So yeah, let's hear how these two chords sound together now. So I think that sounds really good. That adds like a really emotional feel to this chord progression. And we did that just by messing around. We didn't have to know any music theory or anything like that. All you had to do was just, you know, place some notes down and see how it sounds. One big tip that I can give with this, however, is that you don't want to overdo it. Like, let's say I go like this and I'm like just adding a bunch of stuff like here and there. This is really not going to sound good because these notes are all smushed together. Like, let's see how it sounds. As you can hear, it just sounds really gross. It doesn't really sound right. It sounds just off, you know? And we don't want chords that sound like that. We want these chords to have, you know, a little bit of flavor, but we don't want them to be really crazy and all over the place. Because I know a lot of you probably know that you can really overdo it with your melodies, your, you know, counter melodies, but you can also really overdo it with your chords as well. If you add just a bunch of notes in your chords, it's just not gonna sound good. In a lot of scenarios, sometimes less really can be more. So let's say I have this chord here, and I like how it sounds, but I just want one note on top of it. Let's say I just put a note here, and now let's hear how this sounds. As you can hear, that sounds good, and we didn't even need to add a whole bunch of crazy chords. We didn't even need to do, you know, stuff like this. We can just have a pretty simple chord here, and it's going to sound good with the other ones. But another thing that you should keep in mind is that even though you're using all highlighted notes, you're using all notes that are in the same scale, some notes might just still not sound good. Like, if I do this, this probably isn't going to sound very great. This is going to be kind of a gross chord. So I'll play this like this real quick. As you can hear, it just sounds a little bit off. It just doesn't really sound right. And that's why I say you really need to play around with the notes that you're choosing because if I were to do this, this would sound a little bit better. 
As you can hear, that sounds better than the other chord we have, and it's literally just a one note difference. But that's why I say that it's important to play around and, you know, just mess with stuff and experiment because if you don't know music theory, you're not going to know exactly why this note doesn't sound good, and you're not going to know right off the bat to not place this here. But again, that's not super important because if you don't know music theory, you can literally just play around with it and you'll eventually find something that sounds good. So now that we have these three chords done, we can move on to this last chord here and we can spice this one up a little bit as well. And for this one, I'm actually going to do something a little bit more creative. I'm going to go control and I'm going to select these two and now I'm just going to do control up. And without going into too much music theory, this is basically an inversion of the same chord. So as you can see, these are the same notes, right? This is an A note and this is an F note. And down here, it's an A note and an F note as well. And then this C right here stays the same the whole time. So clearly, this is the same chord, except for it's just arranged in a different way. And that's one thing that you can do as well, is you can take notes like this, pitch it up, and now this is going to be, you know, the same chord, but it's just going to sound a little bit different. And we can do that here too. We can do that with this top one, bring it down. Literally just get however creative you want to get, and you can, you know, see what sounds good, see what doesn't. And that's a really good way to teach yourself, you know, what patterns sound good, what notes sound good with certain notes, and things like that. Just, you know, little stuff like that is really important to kind of, you know, play around with and learn when you're first starting out as a beginner. So yeah, as you can see here, we have this chord. So yeah, now if we wanted to, what we could do is we could just copy these same notes back here. We could put an A note and an F note back down here. And now this will be, you know, a whole new sounding chord entirely as well. So yeah, I think for this chord, I'm actually just going to take away this top one because I kind of want the melody to go up a little bit and then down like this. And that's kind of one thing that you should keep in mind when you're making your melodies is that you can either have ascending patterns or you can have descending patterns. And basically that means that, you know, the notes are going up which is ascending or they're going down, which is descending. So yeah, that's kind of an important thing when you're making your melodies, because as you can see by the bass notes, it goes down, 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 down. So this is a descending pattern, but let's say I wanted to, you know, when I make the second half of the chords, I could bring it back up and then, you know, it would go back down. So it would kind of just be like down and then up again. So yeah, it's important to have stuff like that kind of in the back of your mind when you're making your melodies to be kind of aware of what you're doing and just kind of be aware of the patterns that are within your chords and within your melodies and stuff like that. So yeah, basically now we have our interesting little chords, you know, we spiced up our chords quite a bit. Now what we can actually do is we can zoom in a little bit so we can go to 200 and now we can hold down on alt and we can drag these chords over a little bit and basically this is going to strum our chords and we don't have to strum it exactly we don't have to do it from like shortest length to like longest length up here but we can just do you know something like this and this is going to make your chord sound like super humanized and it's going to be like basically as if somebody played it on the actual piano as you can hear, that's kind of the way somebody would play a piano chord if they were, you know, actually playing a piano, which is a pretty cool thing to do, and it adds, you know, just a little bit of spice to your melodies. Also, one thing to notice is that when you do this, it's going to drag these notes into where the chord starts. So what you can also do is you can hold down Alt and then drag these back a little bit because some plugins are going to mess up when you have certain notes playing over other notes. So usually I like to just drag these back a little bit. Same with these ones. And I usually don't like to do this for the bass notes. I usually leave the bass notes pretty much the same. Most of the Time, you usually just want to do this with the actual notes of the chords not the bass notes all right so i just went in and kind of randomly adjusted all the start times of all these notes and now it's going to sound much more human and these piano chords are going to sound very unique now So like you heard, these chords have a whole new feel to them and they're, you know, pretty new and fresh now. So another thing that you might notice about these chords is that they're still really, really basic as far as the rhythm goes. So what I mean by that is that each chord just takes up one whole bar and then at the start of the new bar, another chord comes in. And that's fine, honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to have your chords be like that, that's perfectly fine. But after a while, that kind of gets old. So it's important to kind of mess around with the rhythm of your chords. And what I mean by that is by, let's say I wanted to, let's shorten all these. So the way I did that is that I just did control and and then I just clicked on the side and I adjusted the length here. So if we wanted to create, you know, kind of a fresh new rhythm here, what we can do is we can drag that to there and then control and click over all these and now put this one here. And now we're kind of going to have a different swing to our chord progression. So yeah, that kind of minor adjustment with the timing of the chords can make your whole flow of your melody just sound completely different. And then we can just do the same thing here. And this is going to be basically a whole new pattern. And now this is going to be super basic and your chords are actually going to have a little bit of a rhythm now. And what you can actually do too is you can add in maybe more chords here. If you wanted to, let's say you wanted to repeat this one. So we can just do shift and then click this over. 
and now we can shorten it. And this is just the same chord as we have here, but this is gonna give it some extra, you know, added bounce as well. And then we can do the same with this one, just the same way, shift, and then do this, and then drag it. And now we have basically a whole different bounce. So yeah, I think this is sounding pretty cool now. And these aren't just the basic chords that we started out with in the beginning. And you know, now that we have these duplicates of these chords, if you want to spice it up even more, you can get rid of maybe this top note, maybe change this one to here, do something like that. And now this is going to give it a whole different feel entirely. Basically, our melody just went from having four chords to having six chords, and we didn't even have to create new chords or think about new chords to make. We basically just duplicated these two chords over and then moved one note and cut out another note. And that's all we had to do to give it two new chords. And honestly, we didn't even need to do a whole lot of work to get it to sound cool. So now basically the next piece of the puzzle, the next component to your melody that's really important is the actual melody part because the chords are the harmony and then the notes up here are gonna be the melody. So usually when I'm saying melody, I'm referring to the whole thing. I'm referring to the chords I'm referring to you know these notes up here which are actually the melody but if you want to get really technical about it the melody is actually just the the notes up here but usually to avoid confusion I'll call this the counter melody so I'm gonna call this the counter melody from now on so yeah we have our chords and then we're gonna have the counter melody up here and the counter melodies are one thing that I see people struggling with really often so I'm gonna give you a few tips on how to do your counter melodies right here as well so we're gonna make this counter melody from scratch and the way that we're gonna do this is we're basically just gonna click in random notes up here and then we're gonna listen to it and adjust it as we see fit. So let's listen to it as it is. So these two notes are already sounding fine and I literally just place these at random. So for me, when I hear this and I keep playing it, I hear more notes in my head that I'm thinking that I want to place down. So for example, I'm going to listen to this and I'm going to hum you the notes that I hear in my head. Da, da. So ignore my horrible little vocalization there, but those are the two notes that I hear continuing the melody in my head. So I'm gonna basically click around until I hear those notes that are in my head. So the first note is duh. So I'm gonna click around. Duh, duh, duh. As you can hear, that's the note that was in my head. So now that we found that, we can do the next one, which is duh. And we're gonna go like this. Duh. Da. As you can hear, we found the next note. And now this is basically going to be exactly what was in my head onto the screen. There you go, that's literally what was in my head. So I just took what I was thinking about and I put it onto the screen and all I had to do was just hum the note that I was thinking about and then find it, you know, in the piano roll. And honestly, that wasn't even that hard, but for people who may, you know, not hear something afterwards, you might be, you know, just completely stumped for what you want to come up with. What you can do is you can kind of think about the way that you have the, your bass pattern, right? So your bass pattern is kind of a descending pattern. So naturally, if you have a descending chord progression or a descending, you know, pattern with your bass notes, probably one thing that you know will sound good with your counter melody is a descending pattern as well because it's kind of just going to go hand in hand with your chords so if i were to just you know basically do this the whole way across it would be pretty basic but it's honestly probably going to sound good As you can hear, it sounds good because it's descending. It kind of just keeps the whole, you know, flow of your melody going. And honestly, you could just leave this how it is, copy this over and start working on the next four bars. But usually one thing that I like to do is I like to put a couple notes up here to kind of transition into the next four bars. So you could do notes that are up here. Like I could do something like this. And this is gonna sound good as well. So let's listen to the way this little end transition sounds. So as you can hear, it sounds pretty okay because these three notes kind of lead back into your first chord that you have here. But also what you can do is you could do kind of a little pattern that goes up like this maybe, and this might sound good as well. And honestly, I think for this, it would sound better for this to be one up higher, just put all these up higher because it's gonna end on a note that's one higher than the note that we have here. That's just kind of going to lead it up a little bit and then bring it right back into the chords. And that'll kind of just tie the whole thing together as well. So just like that, it sounds good. And as I'm showing you, there's a million, billion, bajillion different ways that you could do this. You could do literally something like this. I could go like that. 
honestly just experimenting playing around with stuff seeing what sounds good what doesn't sound good it's just part of kind of finding your style you know with making melodies and making beats and stuff like that because honestly there are some things that you just can't watch tutorials on there's some things that you really just need to experiment with and figure out for yourself and that's honestly you know sometimes the best way to learn but yeah so enough of that I'm just gonna go up here and then I'm gonna do the original pattern that I first had like this so one thing that I'm also gonna show you guys is something that I've done in my videos before and this is you know making this little effect that kind of goes like this it's basically just like one note really quickly leading into the other note. It's kind of like a strum almost, like the way that we did here, but it's with basically just one note. So it's important to not use this all over the place because this is something that can be really easily overdone as well. You really don't want to just spam these all over the place because then it's not going to sound good. It's kind of going to ruin the effect that this little roll thing has. So I think for this melody, I'm going to put it right here. And the way that you do it is you basically just hold down alt, you click the note that you want to do that effect on, and you, you know, drag it over a little bit. And then you just click one highlighted note below it, and then you're just going to drag this down, and then you're done. Now we have the effect that we want. It's a super simple thing to do, but it adds a whole lot to your melodies. It just gives it a little bit of flair and just makes it sound really nice. So one thing that I also noticed is that I'm hearing another note in my head when this part right here plays. So what I'm hearing is dun 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 dun. And the same as we did over here with these two notes, we're just gonna find that note that I hummed. So dun 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 dun. There it is right there. That's the note that we wanted. So that was the note that I was thinking about in my head, and once again, we just took the note that was in our brain and popped it onto the screen, and we have exactly what we wanted, so, you know, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, honestly, at this point, I think this is sounding pretty good. What we can do now is we can do Control a and now we can click Shift, drag it over, and now we have a complete copy of these four bars over here, and now we're going to add a variation. And I do this in pretty much all of my tutorial videos, but I never really explain like what I'm doing. So right here, I'm basically just gonna explain what I'm doing. So we're gonna go down to 50 for this one to really, you know, see the whole thing. So I'm gonna play this right, and I'm gonna kind of show you my thought process here. So once it gets to here, once it plays the next chord, most people's ears are probably trained to hear the same thing. So what we want to do is we want to spice it up. We want to change this beginning part a little bit, but we don't want to change it too much. We probably don't want to put a note like way down here or something because this is going to be too different. You kind of just want to keep a similar counter melody, but just have it be a little bit different. So I'm going to bring this up probably. Usually in the second half of my melodies, I like to bring them up. So I'm going to take this note and I'm going to bring it up to here. And then I'm also going to add that little, you know, little roll effect that we did before. And now this is going to sound like this and now the next note that i hear in my head after this one is going up so i want this melody to ascend now instead of descend and this is just going to add like a whole new switch up and most people naturally are not going to be expecting that they're going to be expecting to hear you know the same thing over and over but what we want to do is kind of you know trick your ear a little bit while also keeping the pattern the same And you honestly could just do this right here, but what I'm hearing in my head is this note, these two notes going way higher up. So the note that I think I'm hearing is an E. So we're going to listen to it and hear how this sounds. And that was the way I was hearing it in my head. And for me, I don't really need to hum it because for me, I kind of know at this point what note I'm thinking of because I recognize kind of the similar patterns that go on when I make melodies, you know, just a similar little micro patterns, I guess you could say. But for you, if it helps you, you should totally hum it out and then, you know, try to find the notes. Also, one minor thing that I like to do is always turn this off because I find that really annoying. Like when you're trying to play the melody over here and then you play it and then it snaps all the way back to the beginning. I just really don't like that. But also, as you notice, this is continuing that kind of ascending pattern and then, you know, kind of a ascends, 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 and then it kind of starts going down again. And now from here, I want to just have it keep going down. So these two bars right here are basically just a slight variation from descending to ascending, and then we're just going to have it go right back into the similar flow that we had before. Also, one really important thing when you're making like specifically eight bar melodies is that you want to keep the rhythm the same in your counter melodies. So one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to, you know, move this over, you know, move this one over and then mess up the whole rhythm that we have over here. You kind of want each four bars 
and your melody to mirror each other just a little bit. That's one thing that you really don't want to do is just mess up people's ear for the rhythm of the melody. The rhythm should be pretty consistent, but the notes that you use within the rhythm should change and vary so that it doesn't get too boring and repetitive. But you want people's ear to be able to catch onto something, and most of the time you're going to use the rhythm to help people catch on to, you know, something in your melody. So now I'm going to finish out these last two bars, and I am going to pull a little bit of a wild card, and this totally goes against what I was just saying before, but I am going to change the rhythm here because I want it to be kind of a more spaced out, more stretched out rhythm that leads into the end to wrap the whole thing back together. So basically the notes that I'm hearing in my head right here sound like this. Dun, dun, dun. So now let's go and find those notes. So it was dun, dun, dun. that right there is that one. And now the next one. Dun, dun. And then we have dun. Just like that one. So there we have the melody that we had in our head. And this right here is going to really change up the rhythm as you'll be able to hear in a second. And like I said before, for the people who don't really hear anything in their head, they don't hear any, you know, notes continuing, you can look at it and notice that it goes right back to a descending pattern. Like I mentioned before, I wanted this to go up, be ascending, and then be descending again until it closes out. And now I have a couple more notes in my head that I'm thinking about, and I'm going to keep the same rhythm. So I'm going to have these three notes like this, but I'm just going to change what notes they actually play. So the only place where I changed the rhythm on the, you know, next four bars was right here. Just these three notes. Other than that, all the rhythms are the same. So yeah, I'm going to delete these last three notes and then I'm going to place them back in once I figure out the notes that I want to play, you know, to close it all off. Dun, dun, dun. That's what I'm hearing in my head. So I'm going to do that right now. Dun, dun, dun. So right there, I just figured it out what I was hearing in my head and now we're going to play it and hear how it all sounds. And again, you can see the descending pattern continues. And then right at the end, it boosts it back up just to lead it right back into the beginning of the melody. So yeah, we basically just created this whole melody and I you know, broke it down for you guys, showed you how to do it. And now I'm gonna play the whole thing and we're gonna hear how it sounds. So yeah, basically we just created a very, you know, melodic and emotional chord progression right there. And the examples that I showed you of, you know, the notes that I'm hearing in my head might be completely different from the notes that you're hearing in your head. Because as you know, everybody's brain is just wired in a different way. And essentially what you see on the screen is just the way that my brain thinks. But your brain might just come up with a whole different thing entirely. And that's fine because whatever you think sounds good is whatever you should make. Because if everybody made melodies the same way, if everybody made the same music, music would be no fun to listen to. It would just be boring and repetitive and it would just be the same stuff over and over so that's why it's really important to be original and just you know do what you think sounds best in the long run also one thing i do a lot that you guys see in my videos is that i'll take my melody whatever melody i made and then i'll pitch it up or i'll pitch it down to see if i can kind of get a different vibe or a different feel out of it so i'm going to do that with this one too let's do let's pitch it up four times one two three four and the way you do that is you hold down shift and then you just click up on your directional thingy and now this is going to have a whole different vibe So yeah, honestly, now it sounds like a whole different melody. And we basically just made this whole thing from a four bar, four chord melody. And now it sounds like something super professional and super nice and super good. So yeah. But yeah, honestly, that's pretty much going to do it for me in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you were able to learn a couple of things in this video and, you know, maybe get inspired to go make some fire samples or melodies or beats or something now. Who knows? So yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you follow my Instagram and my SoundCloud. Those will both be down in the description below, along with the playlist of songs I produce, blah, 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 all the other stuff you guys already know. And yeah, I will see you guys next time yeah and the city do it my way yeah touch a hundred on the highway yeah suicide on the i a yeah got them looking at it sideways yeah